Thank you for being here tonight. As you all know, is our science career panel discussion. Um, in the pamphlet that you have in your hand, um, you have information regarding the scientists that are available here to speak with us and tell us about their exciting careers. Um, in addition, on the opposite page to their bios is a diagram about a potential career uh, in science. So a pathway to that career is what I mean. So if you've ever wondered, what do I need to do to be a scientist or to have a cool job in STEM, this can give you sort of a starter to how that may be possible. So it's definitely worth reading when you have more time to sit down and look at it. Also, on the back of this pamphlet, there's more information about our education outreach um, events. And on your way out, I put some flyers regarding two upcoming programs that we have. We have our Neuroscience Discovery Day, which is our community day. It's gonna be December 12th, and it's for everyone in the community, regardless of age. Um, and you get a chance to tour the building and to do cool hands-on neuroscience activities underneath our tent outside. Um, in addition to that, for those of you who will be rising juniors or seniors, you may wanna consider an internship at Max Planck. We have three tracks, a neuroscience track, a scientific computing track for those of you who are savvy at um, programming, MATLAB, Python, Java, and then a third track, which is in our mechanical workshop. And actually one of our scientists on the panel works in the mechanical workshop. So let me just introduce myself. My name is Anna Fiaios, and I am the head of education outreach at Max Planck. Um, I develop and run different outreach programs for K through 12, including students and teachers. Um, so if you have any questions about our programs, I'm more than happy to discuss them and tell you about them. And also they are on our website under education outreach. Um, and just really quickly to give you a very quick overview of Max Planck. Max Planck is a German research society, mostly based in Germany. And there are over 80 institutes. Each institute has its own focus for research. We are the first one in the United States and our focus is neural circuits. Um, and so with no further ado, I will, I will start off with some primer questions to get the conversation going. I have prepared some questions and then um, after I go through those questions, there are about four questions. I'm gonna open the floor to you all if you have any burning questions that you would like to get answered. So let's get started. I have it on my iPhone, no more paper. So, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, maybe we should introduce ourselves? That's the first question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this, bef before we introduce ourselves, uh, maybe you guys could introduce yourselves through uh, some hand raising. Who's, who's in high school? Raise your hand. Oh, every, just about everyone. No middle school. If you're in middle school, raise your hand. Okay. If you're, if you're a teacher uh, at a local school, raise your hand. Okay. And uh, f um, in terms of high schools, uh, where are you guys generally from? Yeah, what, who's, who's being represented here? Shout out some. Okay, one at a time. Palm Beach Gardens, Park Vista, where else? Forest Hill. Okay. Oh wow, it's, it's, you guys from everywhere, basically. Yeah. Village Academy, okay. Jupiter. Um, yeah, Forest Hill. Yeah. Did, we, did we cover everyone? Or there, someone's really proud about their high school. Raise your hand if you wanna. If we didn't hear you yet, Spanish River. Okay. Good. Okay. Village Academy. Village, okay. All right. Good job, you guys. All right. Great. It's, I'm. I'm. I'm glad that there's a lot of a uh, a lot of people from from all over. This is this is really good. Yes. All right. Well, you know, why don't we start as you proposed? I mean, it was part of my embedded in my first question, but we can just jump straight to it. Can you, can the panel please introduce itself? Sure. 
Uh, my name is Jason Christie. I'm a PI uh, here at Fox. <laughs> That was, a yeah. that was a sound effect that I intended uh, to, to happen when I announced that I was a, a PI. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. So I think, I think Anna's gonna ask me what a PI is uh, and briefly, but uh, um, I think we'll get to that next. So. My name is Nicole Holstrom, and I'm a machinist, and I work in the mechanical workshop or machine shop for the Max Planck Society facility. My name is Tavita Garrett. I am a pre-fellow, so a post-baccalaureate research fellow in the Asuda lab. Thank you. Okay, so um, I wanted to start with sort of a very broad question for everyone. And so my broad question is, could you please describe your educational background and what inspired you to pursue your current career? So I have a PhD in neuroscience. Um, I think I've, um, I knew I wanted to be a scientist uh, probably um, around the age of seven or eight. Uh, seven or eight, that's, yes. that's, that's impressive. What, what else did you want? Oh, um, what inspired you to pursue your career? I think I just, uh, I was just, I have always been curious uh, about uh, nature and how nature works and had always asked a lot of questions. Um, science, mathematics, engineering really spoke to me. Um, and that's, what, I guess, what I, I knew I was committed at a very, very young age to um, this career path. Yeah. So I have a very interesting transgression into my current career. I went to university out in California and I have a bachelor's in chemistry. And from there, I wasn't too keen on going to grad school. I did undergraduate research and it just didn't sit perfectly with me. I love chemistry, but um, I have a 1961 Cadillac, and I really wanted to do the rebuild myself, so I went to automotive school to rebuild the motor and start refurbishing the Cadillac, and that's when I fell in love with the hands-on um, making things. It's very tangible, and in, in research, it's very not tangible at times, so I really like the, the finished product that you can see and be proud of. And, and um, with research, it kind of takes some time. And I'm more of an instant gratification kind of person. So that's how I got into machining. I kind of fell into it, actually, through the university out in California. Um, they needed someone that was good with students. I was good with students. And I just learned machining on the job. And through my amazing career path, I landed here at Max Planck, and I'm now able to combine both my chemistry and machining backgrounds, and really, um, I really enjoy being able to to do that. So, it's a little different path than than some people take, but I'm happy with it. So, as the youngest panel member, I think I have a bachelor's degree in neuroscience, and so how I got to that point was. Uh, I've always been interested in biology and psychology. So when I was in high school, those were my two favorite classes. So I just took some advanced courses in those subjects. And then I decided that I wanted to stay in that field uh, when I was in high school. So I selected my college because they offered a degree in neuroscience. And so that gave me some good hands-on training while I was still in my undergrad. And then I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go directly into graduate school after receiving my bachelor's, so I took on a post-baccalaureate position. And that went well, but I still wasn't sure, so I took on a second post-baccalaureate position, and that's the one I'm doing now here at Max Planck. So I've kind of always been interested in biology and uh, psychology, and I just decided to combine those things. And I think it's really interesting that neuroscience is kind of a frontier field. There's very little known about the brain compared to the rest of our body. And I think that's really cool. Okay. 
actually my follow-up question that I have prepared for you okay. has to do with um, yeah, post-BAC programs. So what I was hoping you could maybe talk about is what is a post baccalaureate program and who typically applies to such a program? So there are usually two types of post baccalaureate programs. <coughs> um, students either want to go into medical school or to graduate school. So there are separate programs tailored to getting, in t getting a student into either of those. Um, so medical school post baccalaureate programs usually just focus on uh, giving you some coursework that's necessary to go through medical school applications. So I don't really know much about that, but uh, for a post baccalaureate program that would prepare you to go to graduate school, it's kind of a test drive to see if you really enjoy scientific research, so you're immersing yourself in a topic and you really get you know, hands-on experience with scientific method and developing your own exper experiments and determining if that's what you wanna do uh, as a career and if you wanna go to graduate school. So it's sort of um, a more formalized way to have um, a gap year, would you say? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Um, so my Actually, next one, one more point. Okay. Um, so some people do uh, a master's because they want to get more research experience, but the benefit of a post baccalaureate program is that you're actually getting paid to do research. <laughs> Whereas that's important. That's it, important. No, it's it's very important <laughs> yeah. because um, some people, you know, put a lot of money into getting more research experience when it could kind of be done through a fellowship in a post-baccalaureate program. So it's definitely something to consider. Thank you. So my next question is for Nicole. And I was hoping that maybe you could talk about what your day-to-day -day activities are in the mechanical workshop and how have you been able to draw from your chemistry background in that setting? So my day-to-day -day activities um, we basically are able to, because we're on site machine shop um, and the scientists are right upstairs, they can come down or we can go up and discuss potential um, experiments that they want to perform and the best way to go about and the most efficient way to achieve these experiments and what they need in order to make it all work. Um, so outside, once we've confirmed, could, pff, sorry. It's the end of the day, guys, bear with me. <laughs> um, so once we've discussed the ideas, then we'll kind of get the, get the design process going and we'll make prints out and then we actually start machining the parts. So my day is pretty much programming the machines to make the parts and um, cutting material, making sure everything's deburred and to print. Um, tolerances are very important, um, so things need to be made properly so that they actually fit together correctly and perform as they should. Um, and then, yeah, that's my day programming, running parts, and giving tours. We give lots of tours in the machine shop. <laughs> Everybody loves it. And uh, my chemistry side is great because I've worked in labs. I did undergraduate research for two and a half years, and that allows me to kind of already foresee things that the scientists may need and, you know, kind of point out things that are important versus maybe aren't important. Um, they're scientists, they're not machinists. We're, we live in two different worlds sometimes. So uh, having that kind of background allows that bridge to be gapped a little better. Um, and yeah, I know what a microscope is. <laughs> when you say programming, um, you don't mean like computer programming or is it like computer programming? So not computer programming in the sense of Java or some other language, C++, um, which might be Java, I don't know. Anyways, um, I did take a C++ course once. 
didn't do very well at it. <laughs> <laughs> so programming, we use a software called SolidWorks. Some of you may have heard of SolidWorks. It's one of the leading CAD um, design softwares out there. And we use that to design and draw the parts. And then we also use the machining program side of SOLIDWORKS to program the machines. And we can also program the machines directly, and that's basically telling it, hey, we want you to move from point A to point B at this speed and go this deep and go this far. And, you know, it's, it's, it is code, but it's a lot more simple, I think, than Java or something like that. Okay. Um, my next question is for Jason, Dr. Christie. Thank you. Um, so I wanted you to maybe, you know, you know, define what is a PI and um, what do you think are the most important skills in order to be a successful PI? Sure. Uh, so a PI is a principal investigator. That means they direct a laboratory. Uh, so I have a laboratory upstairs. Uh, a PI is responsible for the design of an overall research program, so you're defining problems that need to be solved. Um, obviously here we're, we're interested in neural circuits, so how brain cells communicate and interact with one another. Um, a PI is responsible for um, not only uh, directing um, problems, but helping uh, train and develop scientists under their guidance. So, um, as I haven't seen the, the diagram, but there are many levels of, um, of a scientist, depending on, on where you're at in your training. Uh, there are uh, support roles called research technicians. Uh, there are post-baccalaureate fellows, graduate students, and uh, a position called a postdoctoral fellow as well. And uh, all of these um, scientists generally work in a single lab under the guidance of a, a single PI. That PI uh, helps uh, interpret experiments that they may be running, um, designing an overall um, um, set of, of experiments that might go into a dissertation or um, being directed into a research paper um, that will be published uh, uh, for the completion of a certain set of experiments. The PI is also responsible um, for obtaining funding. So science is uh, actually quite expensive to conduct, and uh, we have to apply for uh, grants or obtain fellowships for uh, young trainees. And so that's a very uh, another very important aspect of our jobs. Um, and then lastly, we're also responsible for um, communicating our results or our science to a larger public. And, um, generally, this is through um, uh, writing scientific papers, but it also may be contributing to websites or sitting on panels like this and communicating to um, uh, a, a more general audience, uh, such as yourself. So those are the things that, uh, that's, that's what a PI is and that's what a, a PI does. And uh, what are the important things that a, a, a PI needs to have in place uh, to be successful? Um, well, this is my opinion. Uh, <laughs> um, there, I should say that we're not. Uh, every lab director really isn't. Um, that doesn't doesn't come from the same mold. Everyone has their own unique um, uh, skill set that that allows them to succeed. But I would say, probably among the, the amongst the commonalities would be an uh, unrelenting sense of curiosity. So you always have to be asking questions, if you're just plagued night and day by how, how things work, um, um, probably you know, a, a role in science is, is good for you. Um, that you don't accept um, general answers, you want detail, you want to know why something happens. You're um, in, inquisitive to, to make um, alterations, so you want to test things. Why, why does a, a certain object or um, a, a certain cell respond in a particular way. Um, this, if you're curious in, in your own household why things interact with one another, how your electronic components work, blah, blah, blah. Um, all of these things are just, the, as I think, a, a, common, a, a common part of people that are curious. And that's the, that is the key thing that you need, uh, uh, I think, to be successful in, in science. Also, 
uh, work ethic, you have to work a whole lot. Uh, um, you have to be committed to your job, obviously. This is, you know, what we choose to do uh, because we're very, very interested in it. Um, and um, and then uh, lastly, um, um, I think a, a reasonable tolerance for failure. <laughs> Experiments tend to fail <laughs> quite often, and you can invest a large amount of time and effort into this, and uh, after months and months of work, see something fail um, um, is, is something that you just have to deal with on a regular basis. So after failure, you have to get up the next morning and, and do it all over again. <laughs> so you're, you're persistent. Tenacious. Persistent. Tenacious. Exactly. All right, sounds good. So my final question before I open it up to the audience, for everyone or whoever you know chooses to accept the mission of answering the question, um, how can a middle school or a high school student know if a career in science is for them? What sort of things that you do, at, you know, either at the age of a middle of middle school or high school that might have clued you into a career in science? Uh, I'll take the first crack. All at right. This. Uh, uh, you know. And the number of panelists talked about being interested in, you know, having um, a science class appeal to them. I think uh, it'd be rare to find a scientist who said, I, I hated every science class that I took, but somehow I ended up doing science anyway. Uh, uh, so the subject matter is obviously important. I know from, uh, you know, from my own experience, uh, you know, I had at a very young age, I had my chemistry set. Um, I remember quickly exhausting, um, you know, these are what you buy in a hobby shop or, you know, off the shelf that comes pre-packed. And, um, you know, I, I found this insufficient, so I had my parents take me to a science wholesaler. Uh, <laughs> and I went and bought my, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I bought, uh, you know, I actually bought hydrochloric acid and, and, and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, I have funny aside about what, what uh, reagents you can buy before um, they start ra raising, yeah, <laughs> before they start raising alarm bells. Uh, I also, you know, bought uh, um, my own uh, sp uh, specimens to dissect. Uh, so I bought a, um, you know, triple injected frog that had uh, various uh, pathways uh, in, uh, labeled. This was when I was in high school and I actually, uh, invited a girl on a date to dissect a cat. Oh That's, <laughs> that, is, that is not a joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, think, I, I think, you know. How, how did that you, turn out? Uh, she's actually a scientist too. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah, uh, she she directs her own lab in in, in Arizona, uh, so uh, it worked out well. Uh, <laughs> um, she was also on uh, on homecoming court, by the way. She was she was quite also popular. Yeah, unlike me, uh, <laughs> beauty and brains. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're you know I would say uh, you know, um, from my, at least from my experience, it was it was uh, quite obvious and and maybe even predestined. So. Um, these, these are the things that will, uh, if these things appeal to you, then think about science. Well, on a um, different note, on the <laughs> machining side of things, I mean, I did love science, don't get me wrong. I loved chemistry. I, I got a degree in it. Um, so I obviously loved it enough um, to go that far with it. But if you're interested in building things and making things and seeing the functionality of something that's broken, you know, not wanting to throw it away, wanting to fix it and, and make it work again, then um, that's definitely a mechanical engineering side of things and, um, and machining side of things is, is if you're interested in those, if you like cars and, you know, the general boy stuff. I guess, as, as I've been told all, all my whole life. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you like seeing what you've made and, and being able to show it to people and, and, and it's, I don't know, I just, I love it. The smell of coolant, <laughs> the smell of oil. <laughs> Everybody says our shop smells, but I don't smell it. I think it would be weird if, if it did smell any different, you know what I mean? So, um, So that's my take on it. 
So I think uh, Jason kind of summarized um, my childhood as well, just always being interested in science. And one thing specifically that I remember is having a lot of books about how things work. I don't know if anyone is, fami you know, is familiar with that series, but yeah, so I just had a ton of books like that and I was always curious about how things worked, not necessarily neuroscience at that point, but the world in general. And as I grew up, I kind of refined my area of interest. So I would just say, keep your eyes open to things that interest you and ask questions. And if you find that you're just continuing to ask questions about how things work, then I think science is definitely the place for you. All right, thank you. So now um, we're ready for questions from the audience. Who, who would like to ask a question? All right, I'll go to the first hand I saw. Gentleman in the um, stripey shirt. Okay. Here. Oh, yes. Uh, my name is Irvin Williams, and I'm from Bach Middle School. And I would just like to ask the panel uh, just a simple question. Uh, why is it that so many science internships only look toward juniors and seniors uh, for their internships rather than middle school? Why not start small and then grow bigger? Uh, so I, 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 I think the expectations that you're that um, you're looking for a certain level of maturity, right? Uh, so people that tend to be um, have a sense of of um, uh, who can be reliable, who can um, conduct themselves in an appropriate way. Um, a lot of what we do upstairs uh, may involve toxic chemicals or dangerous agents and. Uh, um, you know, perhaps a, a middle schooler might not be able to, uh, most, most middle schoolers, uh, um, you might not want to entrust them with something that could potentially uh, hurt or kill them. Uh, <laughs> 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 so that's, that's, a, that's an important part. And then, and then a, second, a second part, a second part to that is that, um, you know, they have, uh, they've achieved a certain um, uh, uh, level of distinction in in their um, um, education. So you know, juniors and seniors, they've taken a number of of uh, science classes already. A lot, number of mathematics uh, classes. They may have had some programming experience, which uh, Anna re refers uh, referred to earlier. And uh, so, just they've accumulated enough experience that they become um, uh, they're able to contribute to the lab. Next question. Over here. Okay. Just tell us your name and your school. Hi, I'm Celine and I'm from Don Estrich High Tech Middle School. And my question is, how, what would be the best way for a middle schooler to start getting a future career in science? Um, just take all of the science classes you can. <laughs> um, communicate with your teachers. Um, ask them questions um, so you can get a better idea of areas that might interest you, certain paths. Because a, a lot of times teachers know about certain internships um, that they don't actively you know, broadcast to um, the class. So you know, that's a good way to get your foot in the door. Um, yeah, in middle school, it's, it's all about um, doing well in your classes, staying present, interested, and keeping your mind open to different areas of science. Um, yeah, it, you're not gonna really, I feel, I feel like in middle school you're like really far <laughs> divorced from thinking about like a career in science because that changes drastically over time. So I, I don't know that I would like worry too much about that. I would say just stay, like, like she was saying, stay focused in your classes. Um, I think looking into potential um, internships that you can have when you're in high school, like the internships that we have here, it's a very tough um, process to, to get a position here as a high school student. These, these resumes that we get are, are amazing. So you can start thinking about what the requirements are and how are you going to achieve those requirements throughout your high school career. 
Um, you just need to start having that little seed in your head and then as the years go by it grows and grows and grows but if you don't know what the requirements are you can't prepare for them and then by the time it comes around it's too late so i would just be looking into future prospects um and, and preparing for such things and, and we, we actually have a flyer about our internship program in the front so you can pick one of those up yeah. but so i'd say uh also you should have fun yeah. you're in you're in junior <laughs> high uh <laughs> Uh, don't worry about a, a career yet. Just have fun, um, and right, um, you know, go. Um, there's science camp. Uh, lots of those in the summer. Your, if your school's bringing you here, uh, they're also they're very likely they have all types of very interesting uh, science programs to uh, take part in. Probably after school uh, programs, clubs. Um, you can go out on your own. There are, uh, you know, I had I told you uh, um, about my uh, my experience with chemistry sets and whatnot. You can go uh, get that and read uh, read a lot, right? Um, a a well um, a well versed background in a lot of subjects will definitely pay off. Next question. Um, hold on. Uh, it's hard for me to see. Did, did you see which hand went up first? Yeah. Okay, let's start over here. <laughs> okay, well, I think a lot of them are like, um, okay, um, my name is Micah Bond Township. I'm from Western Academy Charter School. Um, my question is, when you choose a specific scientific category, such as um, neuroscience or chemistry, if you work at an institution such as Max Planck, are you able to work in different fields in the same area. So if you were to work at Max Planck, can you do something dis besides neuroscience? Um, yeah, I think it, it depends on your training. So my PI is actually a physicist by training, but then he decided to go into neuroscience. So doors don't really kind of close as much as you might think they do. So um, as long as you're well versed in an area, it's it's easy. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's um, quite possible to switch uh, disciplines early on in your career. And like within the institute itself, it's within the institute specifically itself, it might be a little difficult to transgress or, or move on from neuroscience just because we are a neuroscience facility. But that doesn't mean that that doors close, just like she was saying. I saw someone back here before, sorry. Hi, my name is Eric Strunk and I'm from the Watson B. Zunkin Middle School. And my question is, uh, well, I'm really good with computers and I was wondering if compu com computer science is in the actual fields of science and if so, what would I study in order to have a future career in computer science? Yep. So, yeah. Uh, uh, computer science is a is a, a, a definitely uh, definitely a topic that you can study um, in, at the undergraduate level and graduate level. Um, computer scientists are in high demand uh, in in um, industry. So, you know, Google always hiring uh, Apple. They're always hiring uh, computer scientists. Um, computer scientists also um, can find jobs in basic uh, research. Um, such as our institute, if people are interested in um, mining data or, dev or designing um, um, software that might help uh, address a, 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 a particular um, scientific problem, a computer scientist could uh, assist with that. Uh, so it's an excellent, um, it's an, it's an excellent uh, career path that has uh, a lots of avenues. Next question. Well, I, th I think I'm going to take a mental photograph here. Her hand went up first, and then I'll come back here for the next question. What's your name and your school? Uh, my name is Madison Outlaw. I'm from Oxbridge Academy. And uh, my question is for Dr. Christie. Um, how did you get involved in the research you're doing now, and can you talk a little bit more in depth as to what you're currently researching? Sure. Um, so this is... Uh, the first part of your question, you want to know how I got into neuroscience or how do I get into the problems that I'm interested in? 
Sure. Uh, so uh, my my research focuses on on the um, cellular interactions uh, in uh, how brain cells interact in a particular part of the brain called the cerebellum, which is in the back of the brain. And um, this structure is uh, important for uh, guiding movement. So uh, if, uh, although, you know, reaching for this mic stand is very simple and it seems very easy, uh, that actually takes uh, a lot of computational power in the brain uh, to design an output that allows it's this smooth and efficient movement. Um, and so I think, you know, it's, um, it's, it's similar to the, the field of, uh, speaking of computer, uh, computer science, robotics is something that's related to, to that. So uh, roboticists have, have, uh, have to figure out to, how to write algorithms to allow smooth and efficient movements of, of robots. And so that's, that sort of appeal to me, why, you know, how, how are machines and, and humans uh, similar in terms of, of their, their uh, motor outputs? And so... Um, um, I think that's that sort of has driven uh, one aspect. Uh, the other is uh, uh, looking at this uh, on, on the cellular resolution of what brain activity, what would the activity of these individual cells uh, across their ensemble, how that's assembled into a meaningful output, right? So, so um, in in one sense, um, uh, again, t taking away the the uh, question of how interactions of amongst groups of cells um, combine to direct, you know, a an outcome uh, like like movement is is, a, is another aspect. And the last part, I guess, uh, the broader range of where I fall in 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 terms of neuroscientists, it's I would be called a physiologist. So uh, physiology is a is an aspect. Typically, physiologists are are um, observing the activity of cells, um, and when you measure uh, cellular activity, it's there's uh, an immediate um, uh, output, so you can follow um, the uh, the electrical signals, for example, um, of a particular cell. We do we measure uh, uh, electricity uh, in cells. We also measure um, optical changes, so we watch. Uh, uh, fluorescence changes as a reporter of activity, and this this provides immediate feedback. So there's a lot of science that requires um, doing a lot of work before you finally get uh, an, an answer that you're interested in. Um, in physiology, uh, you can get immediate feedback. You can get feedback in real time, and as Nicole had mentioned, uh, there's something um, appealing about instant gratification, seeing something that's Happen, happening tan in a tangible manner in, in real time is, is something that's um, fun to see. All right, my next question. My name is Finn Wilson. I go to Western Academy Charter School. Um, are there any certain like high schools or colleges that you like to uh, get your kids or people who you want to give a job to from? I mean, I don't, I don't hire anyone, so I don't know if I can answer that. Uh, uh, so, um, no, we, do, uh, we, we take people from, from uh, we, we hire people from, from all types of backgrounds, all types of schools. So, uh, you know, talking about the different levels of, of um, trainees, uh, and I can tell you, I think, from our high school uh, program, we've, we've, we've pulled high school students from all over Palm Beach County. Um, and, and the college, the, the college or universities that uh, our scientists have trained in um, include um, public and private universities f uh, throughout the country as well as uh, throughout the planet. Uh, so uh, a substantial number of the scientists at our institute were um, born and raised outside of the United States. And a number of them received their initial uh, training, that is either undergraduate training or graduate level training at a university um, outside of the United States. Uh, science is, is a very international um, discipline uh, and really, um, you know, it's, uh, we strive to make uh, uh, fundamental insight and discovery and, and uh, we want the best and the brightest and we don't care where they're from.
uh, whether it's, it's you know, on a local level within Palm Beach County, across the country, or across the planet. If you're uh, smart, motivated, and hardworking, uh, we, want, we want you. That's a good summary. Um, yeah, just maybe to elaborate a little bit. I mean, in terms of our high school internship program, we've had students from all over. We've had Atlantic High. We've had Boca Raton High School, uh, Jupiter, Suncoast, Benjamin, um, Palm Beach Central. So all over. Um, I think I'm forgetting uh, many. I mean, it's been like five years of students, so I can't possibly remember. But from all over. And I think the, the most important thing is just to put effort and dedication into your application. Because if you put th the work into your application, it's obvious to the people who are reading it, and that's, that's the most important thing. Your application is a reflection of you, of your work ethic, of your thoughts, and it's really sort of an aside, you know, what school you're from. All right, Thank next questions. Sorry. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Ishani. I'm from Don Esther Thai Tech Middle School. My question is, what is a suggested career path for someone looking to be a doctor in neuroscience? Wait, can you elaborate? What do you mean? Me doctor? Medical doctor? Like a medical oh, doctor, can, uh, yeah. A doctor can be someone with a PhD, mm -hmm. and they're not a medical doctor. I was yeah. meaning a medical doctor. So do you mean psychiatry, neurology? She was like neuroscience, like a neurosurgeon type? Yeah, any type of neuroscience, as long as it involves that. Not that I have any experience in neuroscience <laughs> surgery, but <laughs> my fiance is an equine surgeon. So um, I think for that avenue, you're going to do undergraduate and then you do, and you would major in biology or, or they have pre med majors. And then, and it's just from here, I'm probably the worst person to be giving <laughs> advice on this. But, um, and then in med school is when you kind of start picking. I think you would start taking extra classes to focus on that neuroscience side of it. And after that, you would then do a residency in which you would focus on probably general surgery, but you would start focusing that more and more. I mean, the, the more you go into your education, like you were saying, um, it, you start to tailor it more and more to what you want. But you have to have that broad background um, to s you have to have that broad foundation in order to build on top of it. Um, um, I'm Sanvi Kuriganti, and I'm from Independence Middle School. I was wondering, how long does it take to jumpstart your career in science? To jump start your career. <laughs> um, well, you could do it, no, walk through the typical training from like high school, college, kind of things. Uh, typical training. Okay, so yeah, high school you can uh, you know you'll take classes, maybe do internships. Um, college, again, you're kind of specializing so you're going to pick your your major and it's nice if you know you know exactly what you want to do when you're going in you don't you don't have to but um it, that's nice and then you can kind of um do internship scenarios that are more specific to what you want to do so i, I think that's that's how you would uh, jump start your career in science just um, doing internships and determining which field you want to go into. I don't know if that answers your question sufficiently. My name's Sarai and I'm from Palm Springs Middle. I wanted to know how many like how many years of college you would take to c c start a career in science. I would say that varies based on how far and how how much responsibility you want. I mean, if you look at Jason, he's the head of a research lab. He had to do a lot of schooling. Um, if you, I mean, to to really get far in 
science, you need a PhD. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, to get anywhere, I think at this point, you need a master's. Um, and that's just from personal experience. I applied to a lot of jobs with a very good bachelor's. Um, I graduated with honors and I was applying for jobs and it really, they were like, you don't have a master's, it doesn't matter. So it, it's really, I mean, I would say a master's is almost a minimum, which would be a total of six years. So four years undergrad and then two years as a master's. But to really do, to really make an impact, I think, and, and like Jason again, as an, as an example, would be a PhD and then. Yeah, so uh, you have an undergraduate degree, that's typically four years. You go on to get an advanced degree. Uh, sometimes you um, might consider doing a master's. That would be two years. Um, uh, alternatively, you could do a post post back fellowship and, instead of a master's and get paid. Uh, <laughs> do that for a year or two. Uh, then you have uh, a PhD. Uh, so you enter to a, a PhD program. That's going to be from four to six years, typically. And then there's a, an additional level of training called a post uh, postdoctoral fellowship that's uh, t typically another four four to six years. So um, it's a it's a lifelong commitment, uh, basically. And then once you once you you know you have a position, you don't stop learning. Uh, really, what what I think all of this training provides is um, um, you learn to learn. Uh, if that makes any sense to anyone. Uh, you don't ever have um, the uh, exact core set of knowledge. Um, uh, you always have to, to add to what you know. Uh, and, and the only way to do that is, is to be a very good learner. You have to teach yours. Uh, you no longer rely, after achieving your degree, you no longer rely on someone teaching you. You teach yourself by um, consulting uh, published literature, books, uh, you might go online, you might have um, um, some mentors or colleagues who are knowledgeable, you seek out uh, input from them, and, uh, and uh, you, you learn on your own. Hi, my name is Tyler Rowan, I'm from Western Academy Charter, and I wanna know um, if there are mechanical engineer interns, and if there are, when do they start? So yes, we do have mechanical engineering interns. They are through the high school program that we've been discussing today. And I think they are typically their junior year. The summer before their junior year is when we get them. And I think that's the interns across the board um, in terms of other internships that we offer here. I think it's all the summer before your junior year. And with that in mind, we are seeking out people who have an interest and have already shown that they are interested, whether it's being part of the robotics club or whether it's um, doing other kind of robotics or, I mean, I don't know how many robotics clubs there are in high school. I didn't go to that cool of a high school. <laughs> but, um, but things like that, we definitely wanna see that you've already been actively pursuing that because in the machine shop, you are gonna be running the machines, you are gonna be making your project. Um, we help you, but you're gonna be doing it. So if you don't have that natural mechanical inclination, then it may not be the best fit. And we always want to make sure that um, that everybody's getting the, the most that they can out of these internships. I just wanna add that it's very true that a lot of our students who are in the scientific computing track or the mechanical track are part of a robotics team. And there's actually a camp. It's in um, Boca. It's called STEM HQ. And it's for middle school students and high school students. To, and they do, I think, two weeks of uh, robotics camp. So that's one potential place that you might learn about robotics. Were you going to add? No. <laughs> Um, my name is Beckett Wilson. I go to Duncan Middle School, and I was wondering if you guys study space and how far you can see through space. 
we study very small spaces in neurons. <laughs> Um, in terms of space and what I think you were referring to as an outer space, um, I don't think we, we, I don't think we look, I mean, we, I look at the stars all the time. They fascinate me. The, the supermoon, did you guys see the full, of the eclipse the other night? Yeah, super rad, right? So, yeah, we don't study space. We study, uh, we study the brain. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but, um. Astrophysicists and neuroscientists uh, might use the same, uh, some of the same tools, uh, r rather uh, optical-based tools. So, uh, uh, an astro astrophysicist uses a telescope. Uh, uh, at our institute, we use a large number of microscopes. Uh, in fact, uh, Nicole builds a lot of microscopes uh, uh, for scientists. Attachments to <laughs> microscopes, uh, and a, a microscope and a telescope are basically the same thing. They're just uh, inverted. So. A, Telescope uh, makes very big things uh, small, and a microscope makes very small things big. Uh, so you just turn around the, the lenses, and um, and so in terms of what we see, uh, so we can see. Uh, I think one comparison of the the um, size of things that we see with our microscopes, if. Uh, um, let's say you, you're in the Goodyear blimp above the Super Bowl, you know, the, the Goodyear blimp's always circling around. And when the referee uh, flips a coin and the coin lands on, on the field, uh, it'd be equivalent to a scientist who's in the uh, Goodyear blimp to look at the writing on the coin. So that's the, the type of, of uh, magnification we use. So we can see very, very uh, extreme detail. So we, we look at uh, things on, on the order of um, what's called a, a, a micrometer, and that's a, a thousandth of a millimeter. So is it, everyone knows the metric system? Every, okay, so, yeah. so 25, 25 millimeters and an inch, uh, take one of those and blow it apart a thousand times, and now you're at a, a micron. So we look at the micron level. Uh, hi, my name is Tate Rosenberg. I'm from Western Academy Charter, and my question is, um, are you guys doing any, like, early classes? Because I'm in seventh grade, so are you guys doing, like, early classes for, like, kids who aren't ready, who, like, aren't ready yet for the high school internship? So it's, it sounds like we need a, a middle school internship program, Anna. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we do not have any courses geared towards middle school students. Um, I think the same issues come up in terms of toxicity, safety, ethics with kids who are so young. So I think that the best way to get involved is to do th attend things like the career panel or our neuroscience discovery day and things like that. So I have a up here now. <laughs> um, my name is Dyron from Palm Beach Lakes Middle. I mean, high school. <laughs> um, uh, my question is, what was the biggest project uh, each of you worked on and what was the outcome? The biggest project that I worked on. So at my previous, uh, actually, yeah. At my previous post-baccalaureate position, uh, we were looking at neurons in the hippocampus of the mouse and looking at synapses, so um, the connection of two neurons and trying to determine the synaptic dynamics of that. So I know that probably sounds like a bunch of jibber-jabber, but um, it required me to do a lot of different kinds of experiments. I had to do a lot of staining. I had to do a lot of physiology, which is what uh, Jason specializes in. And the end result of that was to get uh, published in the Journal of Neuroscience. That still hasn't happened yet, but um, that's definitely the biggest project that I've worked on. Unfortunately, it hasn't really been completed, but um, that Jason will probably have some some better <laughs> answers since he's established. <laughs> uh, no, I mean it's it's all the same. It's it's uh, building several components um, um, on onto one another. So we have uh, you know we have an ongoing project in the lab where we have to um, 
where we have a question that we want to address um, and we find that um, the instrumentation that's required to, to, to conduct the experiment isn't available. Uh, that is, we can't go somewhere and buy it. So we have to design it from scratch, and that's one of the reasons why we have a, a machine shop. Um, we can make uh, um, things that don't exist yet uh, to address a particular problem. So this problem uh, that we're interested in requires a special microscope, and we had to custom build it. Uh, we had to assemble um, and make certain probes that um, allow us to... to um, um, study the underlying activity. A lot of these probes are, are um, uh, newly published or we just have to uh, develop them from scratch as well. Uh, so there, um, you know, there are a number of projects that we have to piece together that sometimes take um, many years to develop the process or the tools just to allow us to begin to, to address the biological aspect to that. And so, so yeah, we have, um, I have projects in the lab that have been going on for two or three years, um, and we're basically getting started on them. So, varying degrees. So, I just want to take a pause here and say that we're almost out of time. So, we're going to take a handful more questions. So, um, I spent a lot of time in the front. I know everybody's hand's going to go up now. <laughs> um, I think I saw a hand go up here last time, but I think, you know, I'll come around to these three people next. Okay. There was someone back here. Is that person no longer? Well. I All right. Let's, um, I'll come back later. Um, who had their hand up? I already forgot. My short-term memory is shot. Here. So my question was, um, I'm really interested in astrophysics and theoretical physics. So I was wondering, like, what courses would you have to take in, like, high school that would kind of help prepare you for um, kind of majoring in that in college? Uh, yeah, so snappy, snappy uh, uh, responses. Um, uh, physics. <laughs> Calculus. Calculus, uh, yeah. Uh, physics, you know, physics, uh, physics is a great background in training. Physicists can do anything. Yeah. Uh, so, So in addition to what Jason was saying to elaborate, um, advanced placement classes, any of the AP classes, physics, calculus, um, will definitely be a, your your core base that you're going to grow from on that. And then you can always take classes at uh, junior colleges. Um, and then normally you can test out of classes at university level, and then you have more space in your schedule to take additional classes that you're interested in. So I say get as much college credit as you can in your high school years, because then it's less college and it's more time to do other things. Hi, um, my name is Matt Whitman. I'm from Park Vista High School. Uh, I just had a question. Um, I heard from Ms. Garrett, uh, your opinion obviously on post-Bach uh, programs uh, and getting paid, of course. Um, but what is your opinion of, because uh, I heard from Ms. Holstrom um, that if you don't have your master's program, it's hard to find a career in mechanical engineering. Um, and I would like to go in the aerospace or environmental en engineering field. Um, so that's kind of a question to both you guys, uh, if you guys want to jump on that. Or <laughs> I think the fields are just different. Um, uh, in like, I think the the main purpose of a post baccalaureate program is to get good mentorship, mentorship, and determine if you want to commit to you know six, seven years in graduate school, and you know receive the credentials that will allow you to do pretty much whatever you want in your field of study. Yeah, and I, just uh, not that you can't get a career without a master's, it's just harder to move up the ladder without that education. So I, I don't want to discourage anybody from not pursuing something. And mechanical engineering is a little different because um, it's tried and true. It's a tried and true science. It's like we haven't reinvented the wheel because we don't need to, right? Whereas neuroscience is very, we're at the frontier of it, right? It's, it's It hasn't been tried and true yet. So it's just a little, like you were saying, it's a little different fields. and. 
Um, I say it's your name on the line, do it right the first time, go as far as you possibly can and, and have the energy to do because you never know what life's gonna throw at you. So just do it all as much as possible. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dimitri Cadet from Park Vista High School. Um, I wanted to ask, what are your different options for research, like independent research or laboratory-based um, in college or beyond? Uh, my experience was you, I found a professor that I liked. I mean, most professors at university level will take undergraduates, it's free labor, um, you know, and, and I would recommend doing, and some of them are paid, you do, I did a paid internship as well, um, but I would recommend don't stay with one lab, if you find a lab and you like it, then great, but if you're not like totally sold on it, then try a different field. Um, so like with chemistry, for example, there's physical chemistry, there's biochemistry, there's pharmaceutical chemistry, you know, so I would recommend dipping in as much variety as you can because then you can find out what you really want to do. Hi my, hi, my name is Ashley. I go to British Academy High School and my question is, what obstacles have you faced during your lifetime to pursue your career? What obstacle have you faced during your lifetime to, to pursue your career? Um, I guess I'll... <laughs> In terms of obstacles, I mean, it's always hard to stay motivated sometimes like in college there's a lot of work and it happens very quickly and you don't do well one day and then all of a sudden you fall behind and it's it's hard to to keep that forward motion going and and you just have to keep your eye on the prize and um fortunately I haven't had too many obstacles I've been very lucky I think in that sense but um it was a hard decision for me to not go to grad school and so I would say that was an obstacle because it, it took me a long time to to come to terms with what I really wanted and, and admit it you know and not go the general route um but obstacles is staying motivated for me at least it was it was stay strong and, and keep going. I guess no one in my family was a scientist, so I kind of, you know, there wasn't really anyone I could go to and, you know, ask questions about, you know, things that I was interested in, so I kind of had to do, you know, just self-study, and I think that can be kind of difficult if you don't have someone to to help you along. But luckily, um, when I got older, you know, once you, you know, my teachers and professors were, you know, extremely glad to help me in my studies. Um, I'm Ava Jensen from Independence Middle School, and I was wondering what training you need to achieve a career in neurobiology. kind of um, talk about this uh, just briefly, but um, in neurobiology, you can get your bachelor's in a variety of different things, but uh, you would want to specialize during graduate school, so you would pick a graduate program uh, in neurobiology, and then, um, you know, do your dissertation or your research um, topic in, in that field. Um, then, like you said, you can go on and do a postdoc to get some more specific training in a different area. Do you want to expand on that? I mean, there are there are um, opportunities, career opportunities at um, every level uh, after your um, undergraduate degree. So we have um, uh, again uh, um, research technicians typically have a bachelor's degree. Um, we have uh, positions for um, those who, with PhDs, a um, post um, postdoctoral uh, fellow, as well as um, staff scientists typically have PhDs, and then um, 
uh, after that, you have uh, you generally move on to directing uh, labs. Also, uh, industry uh, also hires a large number of people with science backgrounds. So, f pharmaceutical companies um, need staff scientists at all of these levels as well, from un uh, people with uh, bachelor's degrees, PhDs, and um, they also have uh, postdoctoral fellowships as well. So, uh, you can find a position with every level of training, in essence, in science. Okay, so I think we're gonna um, do the last two questions before tours. So I have a student lined up right here. My name is Jocelyn Rivera and I'm from Forest Hill High School. And my question is, um, in your career, uh, what challenges do you face on the everyday work that you do? Can I make a joke? Yes. <laughs> Dealing with the scientists. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's that's a highlight. That's yeah, this one over here. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I would say just daily hurdles for me in particular is making these parts that do not exist and trying to put on paper and make reality what these scientists are thinking in their head. You know. You can imagine anything, you can draw anything on the computer, but making it a reality is, is always a, a daily hurdle, but that's what I love. I love the challenge of making things come to life and, um, and making functional parts that, that help them expand their research. Um, daily hurdles for me, probably just uh, things not working as expected <laughs> and troubleshooting. I mean, you can draw up an experiment and, you know, have everything planned, but some things are going to go wrong, and I spend a lot of time um, correcting things, refining my approach to get um, data. I'm Rebecca from Gardens High School, and I was wondering, what are some of the different things the inter interns do? So in our particular machine shop, um, they, we work in conjunction with the scientists, so it's not like they're just doing machining, they're actually building a microscope. Our intern um, last year, or this past summer, actually built something to help them focus their um, two-photon microscope easier and less damaging to the, to the tissue. And um, so you do both mechanical kinds of things, working on the machines, making the parts and um, and also drawing using SolidWorks. Um, but you also get to be on the science side of it as well. So that's just an art particular lab. Do you guys have interns? Yeah. I mean, some of the, some of the interns that we'll, uh, we do a, uh, a support a, um, programming. So uh, a lot, there's a lot of custom software that's required for the problems that we're interested in. So they'll contribute to writing code uh, for that. Um, and then on the biological side, we, you might work with um, a, um, a specimen and stay in the specimen and then image the specimen with a, with a microscope. Um, so a lot of what, what the interns do actually contributes to um, productivity here, uh, that is basic discoveries. So they're an important part um, to our community. So I can elaborate a little bit on that. As I said, there's three tracks. There's a neuroscience track, and then the scientific computing track, and then the mechanical engineering track. Um, the neuroscience track is the one that has the most students, typically. And you do stuff from like cloning to you know histology to working with sensors for particular proteins, um, things like that. In terms of our scientific computing, as Jason said, um, you work with MATLAB or Java, or I'm hearing these days some demand for Py you know people who know Python, who can analyze data, usually um, neuroscience data, images of, of neurons that are active, um, and things like that. And then finally, well, Nicole elaborated more than I could, because she was involved in mentoring the mechanical engineering student, but designing things in SolidWorks. Um, that support the science here. So that was the last question for tonight um, before we start tours. But as a parting, the last final question that I have to the panel 
is could you give a few words of advice that you wish someone had given to you as a young student? Um, I would say I wish I stayed in one lab doing research in my undergrad and had I loved it that would have been perfect but it actually probably discouraged me from continuing on so I really wish someone had told me hey don't stay in one lab explore do you know a semester here and a semester there or at least change it up a little bit in in different specializations because you never know what you're going to fall in love with until you do it. Learning it, in my opinion, is one thing. Doing it, in my opinion, is is completely different um, because it's it's just it's just a different thought process going into it. Um, the best piece of advice that I got was um, the answers aren't always given to you, and this was in office hours. And a professor told me this as I'm asking for help on a homework problem. And he said, I'm not going to help you. And I was like, what? <laughs> and um, he's like, the answers aren't always given to you and you need to figure it out. And at the time, I was like really annoyed, right? But looking back, it was actually the best advice that anyone could have given me because that's how it is when you get into this field. Like Jason said earlier, there's, or any field for that matter, the answer is not there. You are making the answer available to the public or to the people in your profession. So um, think, 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 and, and think some more. <laughs> Is that it? No? Okay. Um, I would say don't let other people suggest to you what you should be interested in. That actually surprisingly happens to me a lot. And I really had to, you know, be myself and say, you know, I don't want to do this or that. I'm interested in what I'm interested in just and stick with it. Um, and my, my parting advice is uh, whatever you choose to do, uh, do something you're passionate about because uh, if, you, if you're involved with something that you really and truly love, uh, it's not work. Uh, you get up every morning. Uh, you should uh, be happy at what, which, what you're about to, what's about to unfold during the day. Um, and that makes life very, very enjoyable. And, uh, and also, whatever you do passionately, uh, do it to the best of your ability. Um, give it 100%. All right, well, thank you. A round of applause for our scientists. So I asked, at this point, we're going to try as best to divide up the group um, into eight groups to go on the tours of the institute. So if you could just bear with me and stay in your seat, that would be the most helpful thing you could do for me. Um, Allison is a teacher at Forest Hill who is helping me. So she's going to call out names, and I'll ask you to meet me at that door, and I will pair you up with a scientist who will take you on a tour. Okay, Park Vista first. So Park Vista, you're going to be one big group. Palm Beach Gardens, you're going to be one big group. Okay, Bach Middle School and Palm Beach Day Academy, you're going to pair up. One, two, three. Bach and Palm Beach Day Academy together. How are you? How's your foot? Good. Yeah. Okay, how many do you have? Seven? Okay. I'll put you. I'll put you in. Say what? I'll go with you. Okay. Were you a photographer? Oh, okay. Okay. So Jupiter.
Palm Beach Garden. Okay. So, Jupiter. <laughs> I like computers. Okay, next is Palm Springs Middle School. One big group. Okay, after Palm Beach, we have Spanish River and Forest Hill together. Okay, then Palm Beach Lakes High School and Oxbridge Academy together. Palm Beach Lakes and Oxbridge are in a group for... That's it, right? As far as I know, too. Yeah. 